Well, hello and welcome, and thank you for letting us be a part of your day. I'm Peggy, and I welcome you. And we have um, somebody very special here, and I've only just had the chance to meet her. Susan McLarty is here, and um, she's here. She's a coordinator for Greenville County for Homeless Coalition. Is that, do I have it right? Greenville Homeless Alliance. Alliance, okay, yes. okay. And I, I think um, many of us are aware that people out there are hurting. We go to church, we, we try to help people. But talk to me, uh, explain to all of us about the homeless problem. So Do we have an enormous problem with homeless people here in the upstate of South Carolina? We do. We have a significant challenge of people who are experiencing homelessness, and it's a range of different types of people. So we have individuals, we have children, we have older folks, we have families, but we do. It's a growing challenge that is happening right here in Greenville County. So Susan, what, what, are, you, what are you all trying to do? You're the coordinator. What, what is your plan? Well, this is a new role. This is a new entity, the Greenville Homeless Alliance. So it's really exciting. That's, I'm so glad to have you here yes. because I, I didn't know anything about it. Thank you for having me today. It's, it's great to get this news out to our community because it's been underway for several years. And this all started for people who lived in, the, in our area around 2014 when we had what was called the Tent City Crisis. Do you remember when that occurred? Oh, yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. Well, at that time, it was, a, it was a realization by many of our wonderful service providers who are there, boots on the ground, day in and day out. That's their work, is to help people who are experiencing homelessness move out of that back into stable housing. And they realized that we did a new conversation, a new way to address this in Greenville County. And much of that is because we simply lost are numbers of homes that are affordable to low-income workers in our county. So that's, that's the major problem, that these that's homes the have kind of disappeared. The homes have disappeared. So our new alliance, what we are doing is we're taking many of our existing stakeholders who have already been working for many, many years. The Salvation Army is one of our stakeholders. They've just celebrated 100 years of service oh my. in Greenville County. And so we're trying to take those and look at what are our gaps, how can we all work better collectively together. And by identifying those gaps and working together, we're going to improve the services and the delivery to people here in Greenville County. So as we have become successful, okay, um, the upstate of South Carolina is Booming, I guess booming. you could say. I mean, Absolutely. More and more people are moving here from the north, and maybe sometimes instead of going to Florida, they're coming here. That's right. You're exactly <laughs> right. right. And, uh, and that's good. That's but then that has made your problem worse. In some ways, it has, because Greenville is still very affordable place, as you mentioned. If you're moving from other parts of the country, we're... We're very desirable. People retired and Great place. they're coming here. We have a nice climate and and not so taxes are not enormous. Correct. So it's very appealing to many people. So what has happened in the light of our growth and our loss of homes that are affordable, we're seeing this growing need and rise in those experiencing homelessness. All right, tell me something. Who is homeless? Are these People who are addicted to drugs, are they, I mean, explain to all of us, and I know I sound naive, but I'm trying to, what, how do people become homeless? If you are able-bodied and willing to work, mm -hmm. how do you become homeless? Well, many of our people who are experiencing homelessness are working, and so that is Really? The, they really are. We have in our shelter downtown, the Miracle Hill Ministries. Oh, God bless them for what they do. They're a wonderful stakeholder with this work. And the shelter is most of the time full, which is wonderful. You know, we give praise for that because that means they're, they're doing, safe. They're safe and their needs are being met and addressed. But about 40 of the men who are currently living there at any time are working full time. 
Many of those are working right downtown Greenville in a restaurant, in a hotel, but in a service type job where even working full time, they cannot find anywhere in our county to move to. So they are literally that's, stuck that's, that's in affordable that shelter. affordable because rents are, are higher. Correct. So, so many people in our county are paying far more of their income just to simply have a roof over their head. And so if you're doing that, that means you have less money to address all the other needs, your transportation, your medical needs, your children's possible needs for school, you know, clothing, food, all those necessities. And so then you asked, you know, how does someone become homeless? It's often the loss of a job or a medical condition or something significant that happens and it spirals someone down to where they just don't simply have the resources, but yet what we're seeing is when they say, I'm ready, let's say that happens, I'm ready now to to accept the help and move out of this situation. With however I got there, we don't have the housing available in Greenville County to we move don't. them back to a stable, safe home. And of course, to me, the, the most painful thing I could think of it would be homeless children. That's right. You mentioned children. We've seen a huge that increase in this category and it's very concerning. Um, what we know is, and we work with the Greenville County Schools, they are one of our stakeholders oh, really? in this work. They have seen numbers double, Peggy, since 2011 of families with children living in motels. Oh my. So when homes aren't available and you need a shelter for your family, what else can someone choose if there's nothing available? And that's why we see families having to raise their children in a single motel room. And you see this on a daily basis? Absolutely. Well, what are some of the problems? What, how, can we, how can we help to solve these problems? It just looks enormous to me, just sitting here talking to you. And, and it, to think of children homeless is very painful to it me. Is. It is extremely painful. Because so they're innocent, totally. I mean, they've done nothing to, to cause the situation. That's right. You're right, they have not done anything and we know that effects of being homeless can cause significant and long-term mental health issues for parents and for children. And so when we think about why, you know, why is it important to start doing this work now, it's because we are seeing it daily and one of the programs that we're developing is targeted towards vulnerable children and their families who would be identified by Greenville County Schools and we're developing a program called Second Chance. So second that means Chance. Second now this chance. is all new. This is well, all we new. We didn't even have this a year ago. We Well, no, we did okay. not. Now, so what is Second Chance? What, right. what do you do? So you mentioned, you know, as a Christian, we're all called and we receive a second chance, right? Yes, of course. Of course. From an, a, a God that loves us no matter what. Mm. That's right. That's right. So. The second chance is a little bit around that idea. What if someone made a mistake or had a life event such as the loss of a job or a medical condition that caused homelessness? We're gonna say, we wanna work with you and provide education and training and you would go through that and come out with a certificate that a landlord would then say, we want, we care about this community, we own some homes or some, you know, apartment within Greenville County and we want to be part of the solution. And so we're going to honor that certificate knowing that partners who are invested in the Greenville Homeless Alliance have developed a curriculum and are also going to provide wraparound support services to that family for six months past when they move into that apartment or home because we want them not to just get into that new home, we want them to stay and it to be stable so that child can remain in school and learn and grow and thrive. That, that, you're, you're a saint. I well, look at you and I think, <laughs> you're, this is fabulous what you people are, are doing because you're reaching people that we wouldn't ordinarily know. That's right. Well, this whole idea started, I have to give the credit to Dr. Yvonne Duckett, who's with our Greenville County Human Relations Commission. She is a saint and she just happened to see one day driving on Wade Hampton Boulevard, just like I came here today, past a motel, saw a lot of children's clothes hanging 
on a railing drying. And she thought, now why would clothes be drying? In a motel. In a motel. And she said, God just put it on her heart. She had to turn her car around and she had to go back and understand what had she just seen on her drive to work. And she met the mother and found out the mother was working full time at this motel, raising six children in one motel room. And she had just simply made a few mistakes and had gotten to the point she had no way without help and without supportive services to move out of that situation. That's incredible. Six children in one motel room. <sighs> working full time for that motel. And keeping all the children in that one room. Mm -hmm. So we have looked at that as a partner and also share and United Housing I was Connections. Say, who is helping you? This is an enormous undertaking. And you're trying to see that people who are homeless, for whatever reason, have a chance to turn their life around. Right. And, and, and mm -hmm. so the other thing that comes to mind, if you have a job offer or you have a job, you have to have transportation. I mean, if, you, if you're in one place and maybe the job is someplace else, you may not be able to take the job because you can't get back and forth. That's a great point. So we are also working a lot with our GreenLink, which is our public transportation yeah. provider here in Greenville County. Are they helping you? Well, they are, but they're also facing some challenges as well. They need to extend their hours, and they also need to increase their times between routes so that you can get somewhere. Right now it takes an hour to get from one stop to the next. So we want, so they're working to make that a better system, but they also have to, they can't get someone home from a second shift job, or they can get someone to that third shift job, but can't get them home. You know, so there's challenges around, they want to expand their times, which would open up lots of job opportunities for people okay. who, are, who can't okay. get there today. This is, it's an, an enormous problem, but, Luckily, thank God, there are people like Susan who are taking a stand for good and to help these people. And we're going to go to a quick break, and we, uh, we have a phone number, and we'll, we'll be right back. Um, I know I sound, you know, I go to church.